Hi, and welcome back for day three of 365 Days of Art. I've got day two hanging up behind me right there. I've got my cup of coffee because I woke up late today, but it's a Sunday, so I think that's allowed. Mm. So, today I am still going to be working with the Liquitex paint additives. I have a matte medium just to review, a uh, gloss gel, and some modeling paste. Slightly different setup because we're going to be putting those directly on the canvas before I start painting on it. So I'll be panning down later. We're working on the table today just because some things are liquid. I don't want them sliding off the canvas if I have it propped up behind me. Unlike this picture that you see that might be changing throughout the video. It's kind of the little side thing that I'll be working on bouncing back and forth while my daily art journal is drying. Then I'll be working on that. It's going to change maybe not in the way you think. I had it hanging up because this is a really good example of why I'm doing this in the first place. It started to turn out the way I thought, but not quite. I wanted more from it. So this is a great example of I'm just going to completely redo it in an entirely different way. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but rather than banging my head against a brick wall trying to make something work when it's really just not, we are going to cathartically change it entirely, which is something I always support doing. It's good to try to see something through and keep working on it. And that's why even when I wasn't initially happy with it, I kept working on the mushrooms and there was going to be a fairy here sitting in the middle. Very admirable to try to push forward and learn. And I did start to learn a little bit about acrylics and that's part of what propelled me forward into purchasing a course. But I'm also a huge advocate on when something is just not working and you should really just start over from the beginning. Stop agonizing over it. Stop leaving something sitting there on your shelf thinking, I should really finish that. Why haven't you finished it? Is it just because you didn't have time? That's, you know, that happens to the best of us. Or is there just something about it that you're not quite happy with? Cool. Do it again. Either start completely over, paint over it. If this is honestly going to get completely gessoed over. Another thing I'm thinking about with today's project is how frustrating is it to be kind of an intermediate self-taught person in, 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 in any field. You know, it doesn't just have to be art. I would imagine the same thing kind of applies to music or anything else because when you reach that point that you realize that you want to learn more and you want to actually, you know, maybe have some of those foundations and some of those basics. It's so frustrating watching videos or reading tutorials and going, I know this. <laughs> if you say that phrase one more time, uh, like if she explained one more time about opacity and viscosity of mixing the different mediums and such without even like, you know, making a painting. Oh, guys, I had a level of frustration. I really did. But you have to take a step back because it's just, it's different. It's not like when you're brand new to something and you're like, I need to learn everything. Yes, all of that information is good. It's a weird thing because you can't necessarily skip forward because there are things that you missed because you were never formally taught. But on the other hand, there's just some things that you just don't want to hear, but it's still good. And it's always good to be a refresher. I just wanted to level with you guys so you didn't think that I am positive 100% of the time. I'm not, I have my frustrations too. But I also like to take a deep breath, have my cup of coffee, <sighs> shake it out, just, and we move on. You know, it's okay to be frustrated, just don't sit there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pan down and show you what we're working with today. Okay, I will figure out a better setup for the camera later. This was just kind of impromptu. As you can see though, I have my 
canvas, I've sectioned it actually into two sections because I really want to see the difference of the mediums today. So I'm going to be doing very watered down colors. And on one side first, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna prep it randomly with some of the medium. So I'm grabbing the modeling paste and my goal is that on the other side, I'm gonna paint it exactly the same as I do on this side, but this side is gonna have some extra random texture so that we can really see the difference that those mediums are gonna make. I think it'll be a little more visible than yesterday's project. I hope you guys can see that. I understand that it may be a little difficult because it is white on white. Maybe one of these times I'll make it black. You can see it a little bit better, but I just wanted to do a plain. So I'm actually pouring, and this is one of the big reasons that I have it laying down here. There's the matte medium, which I knew was gonna be a little more liquid. So I'm not, because I have the plain canvas right here, I'm actually not leaving any section of this canvas just plain by itself. That is good to know, it is completely covered. We have the paste, the matte medium, and the gel all on here. I'm gonna let it dry. All right, we're back. This is mostly dry. Again, this is where all my mediums are. This is just completely blank. I'm gonna kind of do the same on either side. For my setup, I just went ahead and got these little wells because I'm just mixing the color with straight water today just to see more of a wash effect on top of the mediums to see them better. And I just went with a very basic palette. I've got black, white, lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, and scarlet red. So keeping it really simple, I'm just going to wet my brush, tap a little bit of water in here. Pigment. Because we're doing a very wash thing today, I'm gonna to try to keep my brush really clean. So I'm gonna clean it a lot in between coats and try to keep my water clean. I'll probably refresh that a lot. Okay, let's see. Okay. Let's see if we can tell the difference when it dries. Once again, I can't really tell the difference between the gloss and the matte medium just by itself. You notice the canvas is definitely absorbing this paint a lot more. I didn't put a lot of layers of gesso on it. And part of that is I just wanted to see what the difference would be between a very absorbent surface and one much less absorbent. And I'm letting it bleed into the red. I'm trying not to think about my colors too much and just kind of rolling with it. Already what you can tell is that while the paint dries really quickly on the paste, there's not a lot of blending happening, whereas where my canvas is wet, you can see the colors really spreading out as they kind of soak into that water, so that's pretty cool. watercolorists do is you can go back in and lift it back up with a clean brush 
that does actually work on this gloss medium. I can actually lighten this whole area back up if I want. I just get my brush nice and clean, come back in, and I can take away the color. Ready? This looks way more interesting, and it just it just looks more professional than what we got going on over here. You see how on the canvas I can just kind of press it into areas and let it bleed on its own. Red, whereas over here, if I do that, you see how it's not really absorbing it and it just kind of pools? So you can see over here where I would definitely probably want to give this more time to dry before painting over it. Just because even areas that feel dry, like right here, this is really dry to the touch. I can touch it, I'm not messing it up. Um, the paint itself is dry, but it still feels cool to the touch. While your acrylics still feel cool to the touch, I do know that's when it's kind of the first part of the acrylic drying phase. And you, it's still really easy to lift that pigment up. I could still take water and take this up pretty easily. If you want to put another layer over, especially using a lot of water, um, you're gonna wanna actually let this dry. A little more, I'm gonna take my flat brush and some black, and we're gonna splatter. Because I personally like splattering. I think it's interesting. And I imagine on just the plain canvas, they're gonna kinda soak in and spread a little bit. I'm going to let these dry completely. I don't want to add any more color on it. Again, um, I could paint something. These are just kind of cool backgrounds right now. I could definitely paint something over top of it, but I want to keep them for reference. So I'll be back in a little bit. Alrighty, that is both of these completely dry. We have the mediums over here, just the plain canvas over here. You can see how we got that very nice watercolor effect of bleeding edges where it just kind of feathers and absorbs which is pretty cool and with the right application could make a really nice picture but what i really do love over here with the different mediums is that already this is a really cool background i think personally i love how it changes like over here you can tell where i use the matte medium and i shift it into the gloss looking at it more closely i can't tell that much where I did a gloss and where I did a matte if I didn't remember what I had actually done. There's a little bit, I mean more of a gloss over here and the matte was in the middle, but they're a pretty similar effect, I think. And you can tell how the splatters stayed a little more on the surface and kind of dried, whereas over here they definitely absorbed where I got it really wet. There's some little darker splatters that weren't as wet um, I do quite like the fading of the color that's happening over here. So I think what would be really cool would be to create this kind of watercolor effect on canvas and then use these other mediums either as stoppers so that, you know, it wouldn't come to the, it would stop at the medium, kind of that bleeding, or even doing something like this putting some of the mediums over it, you just have to remember that this modeling paste is opaque. So if you put this over something, it is going to actually cover it up. Whereas the cool part is that the gloss and the matte medium, I could easily do something like this, put them over top of it and still see this underneath, but create kind of a different effect. So maybe that's what we'll play with next time. Like I said, I'm gonna leave these just like this because I want to be able to reference them and see kind of exactly what I did. This is the conclusion of day three. I did want to point out at the back here, I started to add the matte paste, the modeling paste, to my canvas to start covering it up. I wanted to share with you guys when I dress it over top of it, and maybe I'll do that tomorrow because right now the paste is still very cool to the touch. So if I try to paint anything over it, I'm probably just gonna smush out all of my texture. So <laughs> instead of doing that, we're just gonna let it dry. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Again, if you do something artsy today, take a picture, post it in the comments. All right, bye.